Therefore, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God as he leads you in the way on what everybody is looking for. Everybody is in search of success. Everybody is hunting for success. But the most reliable text under heaven is this book. If you hearken to the voice of your God and observe to do what he tells you to do, he will set you on high above all nations. Top must top. That's where you belong. This is the only book that guarantees that. Most people that change the world are product of this book. Most people that change the world in the field of science, invention, name it, they are offsprings of this book. Is, there is no doubt in it. can give you a catalog of them. You don't need up and down order of success. You need secure success. This is the book that addresses generational success, the only book. Generation that goes from generation to generation of the one that God made successful. Generation to generation. Blessed is a man that feareth God, that delights greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon her. The generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And righteousness is work with God, is closeness to God, is quality work with God, goes from generation to generation after him. This is the only book that addresses generational success. So if there's any book to consult on this earth, to be a success indeed, not, a, not fake, not fake success. Not political kind of games, uh, stealing and cutting corners. Pure success. This is the book. I have proved him. I found him so. People may change and they have be removed. But Jesus will never change. I can market this book to you from now to tomorrow morning. This book. This book. I've not played one game to see what I've seen. They did. Of those patrons before me who have excelled in their various fields by this book. In the name of Jesus, the secret of true success will get across to you today. <laughs> there are those here who will see more than 10 times what I end up saying in my life. <laughs> by lining up with this, not just by wishing that it be so, by committing yourself to it. Thank you, Jesus. Can we close right now? I think we're done. The job is done. I've marketed the source. And you have it. It's on your phone. It's on your own. I mean, uh, what they call all your devices, all kinds of things. This book. Don't read the adulterated one. Though. There are many of them. Some are interpreted by courtists. By Freemasons. They remove all the vital things that can connect you to God. And put in humanistic principles. You don't need that. This does say the Lord is good. <laughs> does speak at the Lord is good for you. Amen. Come on now, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Now, lift up your two hands and ask Jesus, Lord, lead me to the source of generational success, lasting success, enduring success. This month. And starting from tonight, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Father, we thank you for a brand new month with brand new packages of change of story, order of encounters for every one of us. Let it be so worldwide in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And um, please, you may be seated. Praise the Lord and more than the conqueror. Congratulations. Understanding the fundamentals of success. Time and again we have to go back to the foundation. 
Remember the prophetic theme for the month has declared through that epistle this night. Is I'm redeemed for what? The topmost top. How many are redeemed for the topmost top here? Amen. You know, you are the light of the world. A city set on an hill that cannot be hidden. Redeemed for the topmost top. We we'll raised raise top together in redemption with Christ. I met us together with them in heavenly places far above. Redeemed for the topmost top in the race of life. We were in the pit. Then by the blood of his covenant, he rescued us from the pit and rendered double to us of all that we may have lost. Redeemed out of the pit into a glorious realm of life. You know, things in the kingdom deliver according to your insight. It delivers according to our insight. As far as your eyes can see, you can't see it, you won't get it. Though it's yours, but you can't see it, you can't get it. Genesis 13, 14, and 15. I was in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, in 1984, one of those days, I didn't have the date. And he said, my son, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I was in that verse, ruminating over that verse. I said, I'm interested. Everybody that is in his right mind is interested on the top. I'm interested. He said, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. That's your flight to the top. It's not wishing to. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. You're on your way to the top. I had that wonderful drama. Lift up your hand. I did. The top is open and free. But everyone has to make his way there. Come on now. Now, lift up your right hand. Is anything pushing you down? Is gravity on break? The top is open and free, but everyone has to make his way there. So you do what I say, you make your way prosperous, and you have good success. You make your way, you have to walk it. You have to line up with the demands. And then you make, you have good success. Joshua 1.8. Now, we're looking at fundamentals. Understanding the fundamentals of success. If the foundation be destroyed, the righteous can do nothing. The foundation of every provision in scriptures is salvation. Foundation is salvation. Salvation is the beginning of the journey. Until one is born again, is not alive. And the one who is not alive does not need any inheritance. You have Christ, you have life. You don't have Christ, you don't have life. So it's not a motivational center where you come and take notes and go and try whether it will work or not. You are not born again, you are not a part of it. Being born again makes you and me members of God's own family. So we become partakers of the inheritance of the Father. A provision of the kingdom is the inheritance of the Father for his children. So, very nice unto you, like Jesus said, you must be born again to taste or smell anything we are talking about. You must be born again. Not make up salvation. Not salvation because there is emergency, there is trouble. Salvation because you surrender your heart to Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Then you become a member of his household which entitles you to the inheritance of the Father. The inheritance of the Father. Praise God. That's to lay general foundation for it, for every, every provision of the kingdom. God's agenda is the exclusive reserve of his children. It is the extras that fall from the table that others may pick. But it's not as safe as being on the table. It's not as dignifying as being on the table. (laughs) 
also we understand that um, inheritance in the kingdom is only accessible through applied revelation. It's given us all things that are made for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Many of us know what our inheritance is, but we have not applied ourselves to his demands. So, it doesn't add value. It doesn't add up. Be ye doers of the world and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Because it has no value. It's like a man that looks at himself in the mirror and walks away and forgets what he looks like. But whosoever looks to the perfect law of liberty, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, that man shall be blessed in his deed. He shall have proofs of the validity of such truth. He shall have proofs of the validity of such truth. He shall have proofs. James 1, 22-25. So inheritance is delivered through applied revelation. You hearken to my voice diligently, writingly, and observe to do what I command you. Then I will set you on high above all nations. So to do, to do, to do, to do is the applied aspect of that revelation. Doing whatever the word commands to do, we always resort in supernatural breakthroughs anytime, any day, and anywhere. Peter, cast down your net. Cast your net into the deep for a drought. And after they had this done, they enclosed great much of fishes. And when they had this done, not until, when they had this done, they had to do it before they encountered that net breaking, boat sinking, other breakthroughs. It is to do aspect, that's our problem. I mean, many of us have caught amazing revelations, particularly you are in this church, amazing. Things that look like, no, 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 this is getting too much. It's the truth. But because we won't do it. People are so busy looking for shortcuts. Proverbs 25 and 21. It says, inheritance obtained hastily, and inheritance may be gotten hastily, hastily, through shortcuts at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. You know, premature birth is a risk. Is what? The process may appear slow, but it's sure. The process may appear, apply, appear slow, but it's sure. The gestation period of an, uh, of an elephant, for instance, is 612 or there about days. That's two years here about. The one for a cat is 65 days. Amen. Can you see the difference between a cat? The process may be slow, my friend, but eternally slow. Just follow the process, yes. No. Follow it. Who could have thought that this child that was in a storehouse that had no cross ventilation and then graduated into a bachelor, grass cathedral, and then to a bachelor blessed with iron sheets, will be away where it is today, gestation period. What is it? 
Though it tarries, wait for it. If you caught the vision from his word, and you keep doing what he says, it, it may appear that it's slow, but it shall surely come to pass. It shall surely come to pass. Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. Every statement in this service is a covenant vaccine ordained to fortify your life for generational success. Generational success. Nobody in your family will ever mistaken for a pauper. Yeah. No one shall be branded a failure. Yeah. You are starting a new lineage this week. The Lord is opening up a new feast to your life. Yeah. So watch. When we apply ourselves to the revelation of the truth, we triumph always and in every place. Always. No matter what area of vocation you belong. Always. Applying ourselves to the revelation of the truth guarantees triumph always and in every place. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it known by us the serve of his knowledge in every place. We triumph always and in every place when we engage with the revelation of the truth that's available to us. Always and in every place. Now, we are looking at as one of the fundamentals of success tonight, the force of vision. Say we made the force of vision. Say loud, the force of vision. The loudest you can, the force of vision. We have a very clear picture of the place and power of vision in Joel chapter 1 and verse 1 to 11. Now get to verse 2 of it. Sorry, please go to Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Joel 2, 1 to 11. We saw a people here, the kind that the world has never known. The kind that will never be seen from the years of many generations. They are just out of this world kind of men and women of experts. What's behind these feet in the lives of these people? Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Joel 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, church, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now, it will be a day of gloominess and of uh, darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. And as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there has not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. This is, these are the end time saints. They are men and women of unbelievable order of exploits. They will rise in the midst of the darkness and gloominess of the end time. Now, watch. A fire devoured before them, that's talking about power, and behind them a flame burning. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Unquestionable dominion. They are in charge. They have the reign. Now, verse 4. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses, and like horsemen, so shall they run. Unusual strength. Like the noise of shadows on the tops of mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble 
as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. Now, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Everyone will know where they belong. And they'll be operating in their own place. They will be walking in the center of the will of God. Neither shall any thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. Everyone on his path. Everyone. So every one of these folks are men that are standing in the center of the will of God for them. Men of visions. Visionaries. Who have discovered the plan of God and are standing strong in it. When they fall upon the sword on their part, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb the wall, climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in the, into uh, at the, at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, my God. Earth shaking order of men and women. The heavens shall tremble. What? The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shine. They will replace the stars. Amen. Now, verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. So these are the armies of the Lord, not the devil. For his camp is very great. And great is he that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And no can abide it. That's what they call the manifestation of the sons of God. They are largely visionaries. Men and women who have discovered the plan of God and are standing strong in it. It may not look to be working now. You are undergoing a gestation period. Every pregnancy has its own tenor. Amen. But you stand strong, jealously guarding that pregnancy. My God, nurturing it. You give birth. Praise God. You give birth. That's how powerful visions are in defining our level of success in life. Every child of God has is a child of destiny. Every child of God is a child of destiny. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 to 6. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in law. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise and the glory of his grace. To the praise and, and the glory of his grace. We are in has made us accepted in the beloved. Chosen. Predestinated. So when you are saved, you enter into that destiny that God as ordained for you. Verse 11 and 12 of the same chapter. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So we have a destiny that is ordained to be to the praise of his glory when they see us, they must be able to say, praise the Lord. See what the Lord is doing in the life of such individuals. So we have every child of God is a child of destiny. Chosen before the foundation of the world. Predestinated to the adoption of children by Christ Jesus. So when you are saved, you step into that realm of divine destiny. Now, not just any kind of destiny, listen. A glorious destiny. The people has been designated, he has called, Romans 8, 29 uh, and 30, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. 
and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So we are destined for a glorious life. We have a glorious destiny in Christ. Not just what will happen, will happen. No. What will happen has been defined. Number two, we have an enviable destiny in Christ. Because we should, we brethren as Isaac, we are children of promise. Galatians 4, 28. We are children of promise. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks, possession of herds, and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. We are redeemed to be envied, not to be pitied. You should catch it. You are not to be pitied by men, but to be envied by men. Catch it. We have a mountain top destiny in Christ. Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So we have a mountain top destiny. The topmost top is where we belong in redemption. Remember, it's raised us together with him and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. And it's located somewhere defined as far above. And whatever is from above is above all. So when you are saved, we are taken along with Christ above. And John 3.31, whatever is from above is above all. Jesus came in John 8 and verse 23. I'm from above. You are from beneath. That's what I'm talking about you understand. I'm from above. So when you are saved, you are also from above. And ordained to be what? Above all. Your days in the valley are over. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Your days in the valley are over. But no one ever arrives at a future that he cannot see. Genesis 13, 14 and 15. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it, and to thy seed forever. No one's destiny cannot grow its revelation. Our revelation of the truth is what defines the limits of our life. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. No one ever arrives at the future he cannot see. You must have heard me say severally, and to the glory of God, and by the grace of God, that I'm not surprised that where we are, I saw them far ahead from the eyes of scriptures. That if you keep doing this and this and this, this is where I'm taking you to. So I can't be surprised, an arrangement. It's a covenant. Can you make me to think poor since March 22, 1982? Never. Even if you put them in your mouth, you can't make me think poor. I had no bank account, but I'm so rich. Why? He showed me. Jesus showed me. And I believed it. Amen. I swallowed it all. I believe in the validity, the reality of it. My pocket is full, even though there's nothing in it. My tomorrow is gorgeous and enviable, even though there's nothing showing so. Somebody's told is changing. Yeah. Uh, whatever you can't receive as the truth, you can't handle with your hand. You have to receive it and believe it to be empowered to manifest it. If it's too big for your mind, it's too big for your hand. As far as your eyes can see. 
Abraham received that he would be great at 75. So what's your problem? Amen. Get out of their country. The prayer I will show you. And I'll make of thee a great nation. And I'll bless you. Abraham believed that he could still be made great after 75 years. And then you are 23, you are confused. You are 40, you are tired. If God will make anything out of my life, will you know I made it now? Go and make it yourself. As far, Abraham saw it, sir, and got it. You will get it. No matter where you are now, God will overturn every issue of pity in your life to envy. Every issue around you, it will turn you from shame to glory. They have been laughing to scorn at the bottom. God will get to the top and stop. Just yeah. see it. That's where the journey begins. In the same vein, no one ever arrived at a future is not prepared for. Christ, the first begotten of the Father, was prepared for 30 years to deliver his mission. We live in a world that is full of holy, holy, holy. Now, if God, it never makes mistake, but if God ever made any mistake to bring us where we are today, in 1984, we would have died. Complete. It would be the worst mistake. You don't put a bag of cement on a toddler. He would die a natural death. There is no attack of the devil. There is nothing. Just attack of your foolishness. And God is not foolish. He's the only wise God. Glory is in weight. Glory is what? So it is your stamina that determines the level of weight of glory that can be entrusted to you. Or it will kill you. You know what destroys Solomon? Overweight. Overweight of glory. Overweight of glory. Because to build 1,000 houses... For wives and concubines, it's a lot of money. Overweight. And to build, my God, 700 shrines, it's a lot of money. Overweight of glory killed Solomon. Sir. God, deliver me from overweight. Deliver me from overweight of glory. Deliver me. Don't tempt me with it, God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, you know the cost of marrying 700 wives? You won't know it in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> the word says, the suffering of now cannot be compared with the weight of glory. Weight. Glory is in weight. And God is waiting for you to develop stamina for the next weight of glory. Develop stamina for the next weight of glory. Develop spiritual stamina for the next weight of glory. So it will not destroy us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So it prepares us to match the realm of glory is bringing us into. If anyone does not know where it's going, anywhere we look like it. So we need to know God's purpose for us. I mean, it's interesting to know that before we were formed in the womb, he knew us. And he separated us to his own specific purposes. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Even Paul, the arrogant, the, the, Paul, the troublesome man, he said, God, for my mother's womb, God knew where I was going. They were struggling to derail him, to torment him, to afflict him. But God prevailed, brought him into the center of his plan, and his destiny opened up. And the kingdom is not dream it and damn it. No, 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 that's just those philosophical troubles. They don't go nowhere. They have done many things. They are done by it. It's 
discovering the plan and purpose of God for one's life. That's what we call vision. The unveiling of God's plan as it relates to you as a person and to us as a people, whether a church, a community, a nation. Any race that is not definitive will be a race in frustration. If you are running 100 meters, you should know it's 100 meters. If it's 200 meters, you should know it's 200 meters. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 26, Know ye not, I nearly run all and one seventy price so wrong that you may obtain. I therefore so wrong. Not as uncertainly. I know what race I'm running. So fight I, not as one that beat the air. I know what contest I'm in. I know the rules of the game. I know what I'm aiming at. We must wake up to know what God's perfect will for us is. We have three dimensions or three levels of God's will. The good, the acceptable, and the perfect. Many are busy running around with the good. They have missed out on the very good. They are not near the perfect. But in the name of Jesus, by the light coming this week, God will move you from the realm of good to acceptable, and we move many from the realm of acceptable to the perfect will of God. Yeah. That to be able to say at any time, I'm in the center of the perfect will of God for my life. No guesswork. No guesswork. Nothing can be more frustrating than not to know where you are going. Life without a defined destination is an adventure in frustration. Strive to lay hold on God's plan for your life. 1977, reading from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, Revised Standard Version, it said, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. The plans of welfare, plans for welfare, and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. It turned my life forever. When the Holy Ghost began to say to me, your future is in my plan, not in your plan. Go for my plan and secure your future. It gave me very powerful, renewed value for God's plan. That was far back in 1977. And today I'm glad that I'm walking in the center of the center of the will of God without any iota of doubt. Sir. Yeah, I've been corrected severally. I've been rebuked severally. But I keep coming back to the center of his will. Keep coming back to the center of his will. You don't know the meaning of triumph. The meaning of breakthrough. When you find yourself in the center of his will. Where you enjoy all of his backers. All of his backers, sir. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm walking his will. Therefore, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. In the era of drought. My God. He refreshes my soul. Everybody's running temperature. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. You are with me. Whatever will kill me will kill you first. Amen. Surely, goodness and shall follow you all that days. 
He said, he prepared to fill the uh, defense of your enemies. And your God, when you are in the center of his will, your enemies are helpless. Totally helpless. Helplessly helpless. Miserably helpless. When you are in the center of his will, you enjoy such enormous bucket that renders your enemies helplessly helpless. Miserably helpless. Tearfully helpless. Amen. Teeth gnashing helplessness. Uh, uh, uh. If not for God, they can't come near you. Beautiful. He turns your desert into springs of water. And they thirsted them on when he led them through the desert. He caused the rock to bring forth water for them. He cleaved the rocks also, and the water has gushed out. You keep expressing a gushing in the midst of dryness. Well, please choose his plan. In closing, there are two main channels of locating the plan of God for your life. Two. Come and say two. My, listen to this. It will help you a lot. One through the world. God's book of vision for every believer through the word. Now, Isaiah 29, verse 11 and 12, we're very used to it. The Bible says, and the vision of all, not of most, of all, is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee, and he said, I cannot, because it is seed. And then it was given to the man that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I'm not learned. The vision of all, this is a book of visions for all believers. How? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light that shows the path to God's agenda for my life. A lamp unto my feet directs my step towards God's agenda that I see ahead of me. This is the book. Every revelation is a kind of conception. It's bound to deliver its content. When properly nurtured. The other one we are used to is visionary encounters. That's the only one people call vision. Visionary that you saw one bright light, you had it in our television or something. That's <laughs> you don't need any spectacular encounter or visionary encounter to live your life to the fullest. If you open up to the vision of this book as he unveils them to you. My life got a bearing not in that 18 hour vision. It got a bearing from Matthew 33. My life got a bearing. I knew this is the way to being accomplished in life. 1976. So 1981, that's five years. So I, knew, I had the bearing for my life. Five years before I had the visionary encounter. Open up to this book. Open up to this book. People have not come to accept the fact that this book delivers visions. No. Oh Lord, show yourself. And then the devil can even come and show himself if you are not stable. And gives you things that are not scriptural. You start running with it. This is a bank of visions. So you don't need any visionary encounter to prosper to the utmost. To enjoy family life to the best. To secure health and vitality. All things are made for life and godliness. That is packed to your destiny, you see. Uh, without prejudice to visionary encounters. 
as he chooses to unveil them to us, or as we make demand to know where we are going. Amen. Some of the times he shows us from the world where we are going. You know John the Baptist discovered who he was from the world. Who had doubt that we may tell those who sent us? He said, I'm the voice of one that cries in the wilderness. He picked it from Isaiah. Glory to God. And they gave to Jesus. That's John chapter 1 and verse 19 to 23. They gave Jesus a book to read. And they found where it was written, you can put of him, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. My God, he found his purpose, his mission in the book. He knew where he came, yes, but it was written in the book and he found it. Amazing things written of you and me from this book. As for us. Amen. Those are two main channels for assessing God's plan and purpose for our lives. They are reliable, dependable. The first one does not need any proof. The second one needs proof. This one has been proved seven times in fire. It doesn't need any proof. When God opens the truth to you, it is everlasting. But the one you hear, the one I hear, needs to be proved. He said, prove all things. Despite not prophesying, but prove all things and hold that fast, which is true. Now, in conclusion, every access to true vision confers peace. Can I hear your amen? I will speak peace unto my people. Psalm 85 verse 5. If it's not accompanied with peace, question mark, it could be your inordinate ambition, competitive ambition. Every access to divine plan confers joy. Joy. Blessed are they that hear that joyful sound. Psalm 89 verse 15. His agenda confers joy on the inside. It doesn't tense you up. Finally, access to divine plan. Allays all fears. Allays what? All fears. Allays all fears. The same grace that has helped me to find myself in the center of the center of his will will help you. Yeah. The last step of regret you took is the last you ever know in your life. Every of your steps shall be divinely guided Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So vision sets the pace. Divine direction dictates the steps. The pace is set. I'm taking you there. And then it begins to define the steps, which way to go per time, which step to take per time. And every true child of God, we know whether it's wrong or right. We know. Every genuine child of God, we know. By the time those factors are not in place, you know you are off course. You know you are off course. To be listed among the sons of God, this end time, you must locate your place and take your strong stand there. You must locate your place and take your strong stand there. The whole creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And the sons of God has painted in Joel chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. They are men who are mostly vision, who are fully visionaries. They are, not guest, they are not guest workers. They are not guest workers. They just know where they belong and they set to end there. The good news is you won't miss your steps. Yeah. There are those of us who will be in governmental authorities uh, as ordained by God like Daniel, like Joseph. 
There are those who will be local pastors like me. There are those who will be in some great professions or made the professions great by their callings. Praise God. Find your place and stay there. It was in arrogance when I said in 1984 to be invited to the president of Nigeria. Nobody would invite me then because I wasn't even qualified to be invited to be local government chairman. I'll consider it a demotion. It means I just knew where I belong. No guess what? I knew where I belong. I knew I belong somewhere where I will be on top of nations. So why struggle with one nation? Why? I saw it on the vision. I saw it in the world. I saw it in the world. You are going somewhere. Yeah. That local business will just erupt into global sin. Yeah. But it will follow the process of hearing and doing what it says. That's how stamina is built. Every time you hear the word and you engage yourself with it, your level changes. Whosoever hear my word and do it them, it shall be likened to a man that built his house upon the rock. Then come the wind, the storm beats against that house. He fell not because he found it upon the rock. Matthew 7, 24 to 27, 24 to 25. We build by obedience to every instruction. Our stamina is enhanced. The weight of glory is enhanced as we keep building alongside with applying ourselves to every instruction of scriptures. I don't care. You are not changing stamina. You can't change level of glory. I don't believe that. You have a right to choose what to believe and what not to believe. But the more you apply yourself to the world, the greater your stamina becomes and the greater the level of glory you are entitled to. Stand to your feet. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks if you had anything from the Lord tonight by the word spoken. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Because setting your feet on the path of generational success, not temporal success. Not up to date, down tomorrow kind of success. No one here will leave troubles behind for their children. But grace, but grace, but grace, but grace, but grace. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please be seated for a moment. Now you are here. You are not born again yet. You want to surrender your life to Christ. You want to be born again. And part of this eternal breakthrough family of God. Praise God. He's very sweet on this side, I must tell you that. He's very refreshing on this side, I must tell you that. The journey of life becomes full of assurance on this side, I must tell you that. The fears of tomorrow don't exist. Oh, on the left of those of us on the side of God. Come on this side, be free from anxieties, the fears of the unknown, the weight of sin. And come on the path of righteousness. Enjoy most glorious, enviable, mountaintop order of life. And then, of course, the greater of, of his all, eternity with Christ in heaven. If you are here tonight and any of the viewing centers, I've marketed this enough for you. Stand to your feet. You want to be saved? Stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. You want to be born again? Stand to your feet. There's no gate crashing here. You want it on your own. Your own volition. Stand to your faith. Jesus, save my soul. Make me a member of your family. I want to be a partaker of the inheritance of the Father. Please stand to your faith. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.